Hello everyone and welcome back to the ESBN. My name is Chippy, I'm your host. I'm joined today by two members of our club. I have Onyx here. Adam, say hello. Hello, I'm I'm Adam. My username is Onyx and I I'm a member of the Smash Bros team or basically like a sub in for it. Mm-hmm. And I'm also the engineer for the podcast. Yes, our beautiful producer here, day in, day out, grinding for us to listen to me talk. <laughs> You've heard me talk the most, I think, out of anyone, mm-hmm. I think, in general. Even the people who watch the streams, I think you hear me talk more than them. So Probably, and I am aware of how many times you peek the mic. Oh, yes, <laughs> uh, you're the legendary one behind the scenes that goes, Chippy, you can't laugh like that. <laughs> and I do not say that. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm hey, sorry, hey. my bad, my bad, my bad. Um, <laughs> I'm also I'm joined here by a colleague, say hello, Jay. Hello, hello. I am Jay, not Jay Ming Ming, uh, and I'm president for the club, one of the varsity players, overall guy who does eSport things. You might remember Jay from the past. I've had him on here with Piffich or Max as well in the past, so it's glad. I'm glad, sorry, to have you back. Um, today's going to be pretty quick. We're heading into spring break for eSports, and a lot of action is actually slowed down. Um, specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about the League of Legends team, um, but the club teams have also started up. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well um, and kind of get that experience from a player side. I have Adam here, here who you haven't really competed with the, the Smash team in, I would say, some time, right? Yeah, no, not really. Last I played, like, competed in Smash Bros, it was last semester on WMU Gold. Yeah. And even then, I we didn't make it anywhere in bracket, really. And that- now we don't have Smash Bros Gold. It's just Smash Bros uh, Black team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for varsity, and I'm that team's already filled. I'm basically like a switch in if if uh, people uh, if it's like everyone's sick basically. Yeah. So, so um, we're gonna get into a little bit about that um, and a few other things, of course, that'll tag along with it. But first things first, I kind of want to give you guys a recap of what's happened in the past week for esports action. The week we were off, we had an insanely busy week, so bear with me here. There's a lot that went down. Starting off on Tuesday night, the Overwatch team played against Miami, Ohio. Sadly, an 0-3 defeat for them. Um, Tough loss, really. Overall, just couldn't get the ball rolling um, on the offense. Moving over to Wednesday, we had League of Legends up against um, Ball State. I believe it was last Wednesday. Yep, Ball State. That was another 0-2 loss against an absolutely incredible roster. I believe they won last night to be the number one team. Ah. So Dang. that makes more sense. Um, and even then, Jay here had a highlight. If you go check out our Bronco Roundup on our YouTube, he had a Soraka clip where he just like <laughs> 1v1 the guy in lane and should not have won. But uh, you know what? We got all the, the sums out. So you, you summon our spells. You worked, right? Respect to the banana. <laughs> the power at play. Oh, my Boy, goodness. Boy, Soraka mid. Um, Moving on to Thursday, there was a doubleheader for the Overwatch team. They faced up against Eastern Michigan University, a crosstown rival for us at Eastern, and we pub stomped them. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure it was 3 1, 3 0, one of the two. Um, but it was an absolutely insane match. The Broncos came out swinging early on, and it was just kind of uphill from there. So, Broncos picked up a nice one in Overwatch on that day. Um, and we're moving on to Friday. Friday actually didn't have any games. However, at our arena, we hosted the Bronco Beatdown, a monthly fighting game tournament that ends on the last Friday of, or starts on the last Friday of every month. So if you want to catch it this month at the end of March, we will be having it on the 28th. So feel free to sign up. It's um, a $15 venue fee and $5 entry for each game. But I promise you it's a great time. Um, let's give you a little bit of insight. We had two Bronco victories actually in the tournament. One of them being in Guilty Gear Strive. Shout out to Rose Bow, who's actually also a WMU Esports staff member for us. Um, he picked up a crazy win in, in uh, Guilty Gear. And if you know how long those games are, yeah, he played for a while. It was like a 50-minute set, um, a best of five with a reset possible. So he played for like 50 minutes. That was absolutely crazy. Um, and then um, we picked up the win in Smash Bros, picking up first and second place. Shout out to Zeke. Um, or Z Kayani, as you he's known on there, or Z, I just call him Z. But and then uh, he took first place in that bracket for like a 13-man smash bracket, and then um, Allegro got the follow-up in second place. So a big tournament for the Broncos overall. We had a lot of community members from the Kalamazoo fighting game community who came out as well to that tournament and saw the matches. 
We move on to Saturday night for League of Legends, and I'm actually just drawing a blank, Jay, who you played last Saturday. I think it was actually Akron. It was Sat Akron. It Saturday? was Akron. Yep. yep, it was the Akron game. That is um, correct. I heard a little bit about it. That yeah. was the tough one. That one was another 0-2 defeat. That one, in my opinion, was a very strong showing early on from you guys. I mean, I think game one was definitely yours to have. It just kind of slipped away late game. Um, and game two was just one of those games where it was already momentum-based. Not much you could go off of. So a tough loss overall for the team on that Saturday night against Akron. Um, sadly to say, though, I think that match was the deal breaker for playoffs, right? That match, um, it was prior to that match, it was pretty much sealed, but that match is the one that means that mathematically we will not be able to make playoffs, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a bummer, but mm. even then, um, that Saturday was the last of that, so we had like a six day week for esports while we were not having the podcast. So, to give you a little bit of insight, I wasn't here because I was working every single day last week. That was intense. Move on to this week, Tuesday night. Um, this past Tuesday night on, let me at least get the day correct, February 27th, our Overwatch team faced up against, um, it wasn't Northern Illinois. It was another team. Uh, a team. Illinois State? It was, uh, wow. I usually am much more prepared for the names when I get into here. And then it's just like, just gone. It was BGSU, Bowling Green State University. That's right. So the reason why I remembered okay. NIU is because we played Northern Illinois University on the February 13th, the fourth week of the conference for ESC, for Overwatch, right? Um, we were up 2-0 in that game, and we lost a reverse sweep 2-3 um, against NIU. A brutal loss for the Overwatch team. Bowling Green started off the same way. Absolutely dominant force. Broncos looked unbeatable, I mean, early on into the game. Same way as they performed against Ball State early on in the season where they got, you know, a 1-3 loss. But they picked up that first game, which gave them a lot of hope, right? 2-0 led to 2-1, to 2-2, to an overtime in game number five. And the Broncos couldn't seal it out. And they picked up another reverse sweep loss against BGSU. That one was way more brutal and crushing to watch than the NIU one. Because the NIU okay. one was definitely like, oh, we were just playing better until a certain point. The Broncos were still playing better against BGSU, in my opinion. But they have this funny character in Overwatch called Sombra. Okay. Um, and <laughs> Sombra goes hacky, hacky, um, virus, virus. And then that's it. Um, sadly, the team couldn't really adapt around a Sombra. And um, the team fights just kind of went BGSU's way every single time. So it was a bummer to see. But... You know, that's another loss in the tank. And I believe that um, kind of crushed the deal for the Overwatch playoffs as well. They have a long season, though. They have plenty more games, so that I think there's time to crawl back into that one, possibly in the eighth seed for the playoffs. Um, but it's going to be close. It's going to require some other teams to get some losses as well for the Overwatch team. On Wednesday night, though, we finally make it back to some League of Legends action. Excuse me. And we have Jay here. And I need you to tell me a little bit about this. You guys went down 0-1 after that first game. Now, what are your thoughts going down 0-1? Going down 0-1 yesterday was a pretty rough feeling um, because uh, going into yesterday, we were pretty confident that this should be a team that we beat. This is a team that statistically, on paper, we have higher ranks. We should do better. Um, but for the entire history of this roster we have not won a single game after dropping the first game if we Even drop then, like I, one, I think it's boomed from all the games i've watched from you guys i think i've watched almost every single game you guys have ever had i don't remember you guys ever winning a reverse sweep i think you've always tied it back one one maybe in like the four games i've ever seen it go to game three for the but for for the record um and it was crazy I mean, there there was one thing that we had different though yesterday, which led it from an 0-1 to a 1-1. Florge. Yes, yes. The Florge, Florge factor. Florge? Yes, yes. Florge so we, factor. They had a sub in who was finally free. He doesn't do his um, 
snowboarding lessons mm-hmm. right now, right? He had some free time. Yeah, unfortunately, it was like 70 degrees the other day, so I don't think that's happening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Fortunately, it snowed the day after. Thank you, so, Michigan. So, uh, Flo, mm-hmm. or Nick, um, who was stepping down as a sub position because he wasn't fully available for the semester, subbed in for game number two, and it was a momentum driver for you guys. He had a fresh face in there. The Florge factor was I re- insane. I remember hearing him before game um, two. He was talking a little bit about... Um, to, to Zach, the coach, about the lane, and he was like, "You know, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna win that lane, but I'll do my best to slow him down." And nah, that, he just honestly, straight won. He, he just straight won. Up won. <laughs> yeah, that was what was crazy. He, um, Nick, who I, I think has played like what, like 15 games this season. He's barely it, played. At most, he's played like 15. He has basically not played a ton this season. Came in, dropped a bomb on their highest ranked player yeah. two games in a Masters row, and we got the reverse sweep. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it was crazy. Especially the comp into game three. I was very shocked at how a Galio was gonna beat. Was it a Syndra? It was. Um, they picked an Alawi mid. Yes, yes, into, yes. And then we yes, just Galio countered Syndra. Two. Yeah. And it's like, mm. yeah. I mean, that's a crazy draft <laughs> yeah. idea where the Alawi mid right now is a really niche but very strong pick. Uh, unfortunately, R five mid laner, we outrange you. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. You're never doing anything. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. So, um, that was absolutely crazy to watch. I'm very proud of the team for that win as well. You guys really pulled it out. Um, it seemed like it was much more of a rallying factor that brought you guys together for that game as well. You got out of the tilt phase and just kind of played played the game pretty much. So the forge factor, big went crazy. Uh, big shout out to you guys. You have a game coming up on this Saturday, so uh, good luck in that one as well. I'll mm-hmm. be there, of course. Um, if you want to go watch that online, like should me. be a win, hopefully. I will be in Illinois at the time, but I will wish you the best of luck, and we'll probably be watching. Yeah, I don't stream. get my I don't get my spring break as soon as everyone else does. I got to work on Saturday, so. Uh. <laughs> I wish, but uh, regardless of that, that is actually all the recaps I have for you guys on the varsity side. We're going to move into a little bit of the club stuff. Before I go into how the club team has been doing so far this semester, I wanted to kind of give this a moment to kind of say hello to Adam because, you know, as much as we all can hear um, and listen into this podcast, you don't really get to see a lot of the work that happens behind the scenes, right? So a big uh, kudos to you as well as the wider staff here as well for kind of letting us come in here and put this together. It's really nice. It's a beautiful space. I love coming in here every single day to do the podcast. Even if I'm busy, I miss it. You know, um, I love having this kind of space. And so when I first met you back in the fall, when you were first interested in even doing anything, I had no idea you were wanting to be a, was it an audio, uh, what like major a, were you again? Uh, multimedia arts. That's right. So like audio I wanted to say multimedia arts, but then I was like, there's no way it's multimedia arts. What if you <laughs> film? Uh, I kid. But, you know, first talking to you about that, you know, I tried conning him into working for the arena originally. <laughs> um, it didn't work. Listen, and instead listen. he got this job. So <laughs> later, maybe when I'm maybe uh, later in school years, when I have to look for like an internship, <laughs> probably then I'll yeah, be like, right. yo, I'm, I'm hey here. Guys, I'm open. I'm available. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wish. But yeah, I didn't have any internships this semester. Bummer. It was sad. But... Mm-hmm. Um, big kudos to you, and ever since I met you, you know, you were part of the Smash team in that first semester. Now, tell me a little bit about that dynamic, being a part of the Smash team, you know, that first kind of team environment for you, or what was it like? I Initially, I'm going to be honest, I thought it was like, I didn't realize what a, what like the the tag battle system was that we had. Mm-hmm, the for, crew battle format. Thank you, that's yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I, when, when, like, okay. Only on the mic, I'm, I stutter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, you're fine. Uh, I, my initial thought for it was just like, oh, it, we're all going to be in a bracket, and just if one of us gets to the top, that's a win. That is not what it was. Yeah. I I think the, the team dynamic, it was just... It was very odd because not many people talked in the, the Discord chat, mm-hmm. but, ev- but like everyone was like, okay, yeah, we can meet up at those times. Just, just gamers. Yeah, game. you're just gaming. That's what, <laughs> I, that's what I found out as well. It's just like you guys just showed up and played and nothing was said. I, you just played. I mean, yeah, but we so, still popped off when we played. You guys we, did. Yeah. Like, I mean. okay, first game that we pl- like we all played together, I, I, I think, like, yeah, it was... Uh, we, it was pretty even with the first team we faced, uh, and then uh, our I think our 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 coach uh, Marcus just 
his he mains Ganondorf, mm -hmm. and he came in, swept and like swept the floor, and we were just like, all right, no, you take it, you take it, you do the second game, just mm -hmm. you go first. Like it was like a 10-0 in terms of stocks. Yeah, he did the he entire him, thing. Did he make, it was, yeah, did they it, rage quit? It was Akron's club smash yeah. team, and he made them rage quit. I believe. <laughs> yeah, they did. We did. <laughs> they just absolutely just quit. They didn't even send in the fourth guy. They just gave up. So, um, so I thought that was incident. insane, and I wanted to um, kind of further lead on to that. Where, um, if you aren't aware of anything that's happening with our smash team here for the club, um, I write, also write a newsletter as well to kind of give a recap for these types of things. So the smash team has currently, in my opinion, been playing out of their minds. Boasting a 2-0 record right now, um, and also being part of our Campus Clash event, they beat GVSU, who I would say has a very formidable Smash team as well mm -hmm. in the area, 2-0. Um, beat them pretty handily, it was amazing to see. Um, but um, funnily enough, you mentioned that Marcus is a sub for the current um, main roster as well. Oh, and I thought he was just on the team. He is, but he actually played this past match. Mm -hmm. He was the only one that played. Oh, he dang. lost three total stocks and took twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, my and god! And if you think about it like this, um, think about it like lives, okay? <laughs> Marcus, um, each team has twelve total lives, and each player only gets three total lives per round, right? Mm -hmm. Marcus went in and only lost and accumulated three stocks. Or, yeah. yeah, three stocks. Three, three total lives. stocks across 24. Across how many games is that? Eight <laughs> matches. Across eight total matches, he lost three stocks. And yeah. Taking three stocks per of those eight, if that makes sense. Listen, all I'm saying is online Ganon. Online Ganon can both lose and win to anyone. <laughs> and when I read the Club Smash channel, they were like, the captain of the, the current team, Z, was like, hey, um, guys. Who's going to tell Chippy that only Marcus played this past weekend? <laughs> and I thought they were joking with me. I thought, I thought they were making jokes with me and trying to mess with me. And then they uploaded the VOD. And it was real. It was actually real. I watched Marcus farm for 13 minutes. I bet you he sat there for 20 minutes for that game. It was like, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I was, I was shocked. Cook. I was floored. We but, gotta upload a highlight reel of that. A montage. A montage. Yes, we have some of them in the club. <laughs> um, you gotta post them in general as they come out. But um, hopefully we're able to stream some of those games soon because that team is doing absolutely phenomenal. Um, and they'll be heading to a Bethel pilot invite um, down in South Bend, Indiana. Um, we were a part of a team that was able to come out and compete with the Smash teams. So we'll have to see how our Broncos face up against the best Smash team in the nation, I would say right now, MSU. Mm. So, in my opinion, I think we're just as good as them. Um, what so. you've described, yes. And from what I've seen in, like, casual tourneys of, of everyone playing, I they can wipe the floor with people. And yeah, I, I don't know what that what they do. Ball State had a smash team, right? Their club smash team. They don't have it as a varsity team. Um, I know they're crazy. And we too owed Ball State. So, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's going on there, but we are farming in I, smash right now and it's crazy there i don't i i understand technically like how they do everything but i just don't understand like the amount of time they pr got that they put into like practicing everything and optimizing mm -hmm. how they play like from di to practicing teching very hard techs yes. to just like different combos with the characters they all play like uh i believe it was this uh, this semester, we got a new person on the Smash team yes. who plays Hero. Hero, yes. I, and I don't. It's crazy. It's if, crazy to me. If anyone out there knows a little bit about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the micromanaging that you have to do on Hero is crazy. He has like four options of abilities he can select, all with different combos and different inputs. Yep. So he has to know each one of those per ability. And when his his mana bar maxes out, he gets a new ability for each of the four abilities that does either an enhanced effect or something even cooler. I think you're thinking of Cloud. I might be thinking of Cloud. You're thinking but of Cloud's limit break. You were right with Hero, with Hero where he has four different just, options. I think a mana bar is the nuts, you also but can watch the mana bar. Yup, yup. Because Because all of his specials require mana, from like his recovery to both of his projectiles. It's like a boom projectile, and then he has a kaboom projectile. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. Uh, <laughs> I'll yeah, never I, forget. <laughs> playing against playing a pickup game against somebody who's really good at hero, 
Uh, he had me down two star. I, I, I had died twice. He had on, he hadn't died yet. Guy twice in a row just does the self destruct option. <laughs> Kamikaze. <on the> <laughs> Kamikaze. He does that twice in a row, back to back, to make it even, and then proceeds to just beat me. Oh my <laughs> gosh, hard. Man. I got egoed on by that no. guy so hard. No. A good hero is terrifying. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me he top decked it. Please tell me he just like immediate down beat into Kamikaze. Just, yeah, just, he came out of respawn. And, and, he did and not want those lives. He he gave me two homie stocks and then proceeded to kick me into the ground. <laughs> he punched himself twice in the face and said, "What do you got? What do you got?" And then he won. I, I can take it. Come on, come on. Here, you can't do it. Let me show you how to beat me. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, that's just some of the crazy stuff the Smash team has been up to lately. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, I wanted to kind of further go down a little bit into our um, club newsletter and give you a little bit more insight into what we have currently for competing club teams. Now we have two Rocket League teams. Um, we might be down to one um, due to some of the players having a lot more flight schedules um, coming in. We have a lot of aerospace students. Um, or sorry, it's aerospace engineering and flight students, I should say, um, who compete in esports. And they are so busy, I don't know how they play all the time. But we currently have the COD team, the two Rocket League teams, a Valorant team, and the Smash Bros team, right? So the COD team is currently um, one and two. They picked up a forfeit win, um, and then we had them streamed recently. Um, they're doing really great so far this semester, and hopefully they improve a little bit more. I'm looking forward to streaming more of their games, and I'm really excited. If you're interested in COD, feel free to join the Discord. Discord.gg forward slash club esports WMU. Furthermore, the gold and the black Rocket League teams are off to tough starts so far, I would say. The gold team is currently um, one, or sorry, I believe they're 0 3. No, yes, they're 0 3. Um, having a forfeit loss recently due to a player not being able to show for the game, but that's okay. Um, the black team is actually 1 and 1. They're the lower ranked team out of the two, the gold team being the higher one. Um, and the black team is actually one and two right now. They picked up a crazy win a couple weeks ago. This past week, they were so close. It was one to two, and it was an overtime goal in the first five seconds that lost them the game. And they were crushed. I could see it on their faces right after the game. They were so beaten. They were up 3-0 in that game, too, and then lost in overtime. That, that was tough. Um, they're doing great so far. They have plenty more games in their season. I think they got a total of nine games. So they got another, you know, like five games, right? So tons and tons of stuff left for them and plenty more to go. But the Valorant team, though, on the other hand, they are off to the roughest start out of all of them. Currently at an 0-3 record. Um, they also have plenty of games, but that's the kind of tough part is with the Club Valorant team. We actually lost like two of our main players to the varsity team. They moved up. Onto the varsity starting roles where um, one of them took over the IGL role recently for the main team. And then the other one um, is more of a support player that they picked up as well. And that really hindered the club team for the most part. They lost two of their core players, a support player and an IGL. Good luck reforming your team around that, right? That's an incredibly tough feat so far. And they're still trying to build up that structure again. So they've been really, really struggling so far on the lower sides for those games. But yeah. That's the main club updates I have for you for games wise. Jay, you had a little bit more to add on to the club. I will, I will say one thing. The league team thus far is undefeated for the club. Yes, because the club League of Legends Ooh, team has not started days. their season. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. But hey, let it be known, we have yet to drop a single game. We are undefeated. They are undefeated, zero and zero. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. <My> goat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, the other thing I had to add uh, as club president was, so, some people had noticed that our dues had gone up this semester from last semester. Last semester, I tried to heavily lower dues costs as much as I could. Um, however, this semester, they've gone back up to what they were more in around 2021 um, and some of 2022. Uh, and I know that for some people, that can be annoying or uh, a bit of a challenge, which um, the reason behind that is not that, you know, I'm trying to money max or anything like that. Um, it's uh, rather, we have a couple of programs that we are trying to do. Uh, the biggest one being with these raised dues prices, we will be getting a jersey for every player on every club team. Mm -hmm. um, and that will open up a lot of avenues for us, not just in terms of it will make it 
so we look better when we're competing because we all will have the same we'll have the jerseys we'll look yeah. like teams um but it'll also be you'll see people around campus wearing a jersey and you'll be able to connect with other club members in the in the wild or people will see it and be like hey what jersey is that and you, a little bit of recruitment there as well as that also opens us up to being able to get more sponsorships stuff like that which then in turn gets us more funding to do more cool events more cool things so it's a little bit of an inconvenience to some people to have to pay a little bit more in dues but that's overall uh, i've always had the policy of i am happy to talk about dues with anyone i think that it's a very good price for what you get considering you get a very nice jersey and you get uh if you're on a coached team which has the higher dues you get coaching for a semester if you're on an uncoached team i believe the dues price is lower than the cost of a jersey like, would be on its own if not it's like it's pretty much like dead like even the price yeah is it? I'm that not sure. I, I don't think it's half, okay. but it's I think it's a, I think it's, 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 it's a, I think it's around the same amount. Um, but then you're getting all the other club benefits on top of it, which, yeah. yeah. And even then, to even add on to that point, you know, us as the club officers, we provide the tournament, we provide the stability for it, we provide the formatting, we provide all the forms of communications, and we provide a space for you to compete. In. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And overall, we still have. I've, I've talked to a good handful of other clubs that do like competitive sports type of things. We have compared to them pretty low barriers to entry, especially on fees, mm-hmm. just because you only have to pay the dues and then you don't need any equipment you can play at the arena or play a game on. You don't have to pay like $500 for the full outfit and gear and everything. It's, you can, it's a very accessible you program. You can quite literally, to give you a, uh, another concept or an idea for you guys listening out there, there's a league out there called the Collegiate Cephalopod Association. And this is Splatoon 3. You, oh. said Splat- you said Cephalopod, and uh-huh. I'm like, oh, hold that on. That is a Splatoon Collegiate League. If you spend the money and buy the game, I have the switches provided to get you into the league. Right. That's mm. it. That's the bar. You know, if you're new to competing in esports and stuff like that, we have a lot of the opportunities and the resources available to get you in there. If you want to start competing and want to learn how we also have those resources with people who are open to coming in and playing with you, to teaching you, right? It just takes some time, right? You got to be able to, you know, be persistent, be able to ask some people, hey, do you want to play? Because that's what a lot of the time um, some people are doing. Right now, we have a Minecraft server up. I We've had, I think, 30 people join. Easily. So, I mean absolutely incredible turnout for our minecraft server you know and tons of people are having fun with it we're trying to host events on there as well as the time goes by so you know we're doing our best to try to accommodate a lot of resources especially to you know give some people some comfort during times of stress like midterms right right Mm -hmm. before spring break got a minecraft server play some minecraft play some survival get a little bit of stress out right enjoy that time for survival it's stressful for more so anyways um i'll also disclaimer (laughs) (laughs) i will also add um for anyone who is worried about financially am i able to join the club i'd like to but i don't know if i can pay 80 dollars right now we are open to doing payment payment plans with that sort of stuff and in general i just i like to put it in the terms of that is all that you have to commit to the club anything else is optional we have a varsity player who doesn't even have a computer mm-hmm. they o- they fact. play at game on in the arena they don't play anywhere else because they didn't want to bring a computer onto campus because they didn't want to have the bad influence of the drawing which i respect yep. mm-hmm. i could never do that but i respect it yeah so <laughs> it is a it is a low barrier to entry but if you are worried about that i encourage you to reach out to me and i can talk to you about that reach out to max our treasurer reach out to Chippy, reach out to any of the officers and we can try to help you out with that. Definitely. And it's a big thing. And, and dues were one of the things that even when I first joined, I was like, what, there's dues? I never knew what a club was. You know, I never was a part of it. I did theater. I just did theater. That's it. I didn't have to spend any money. I just had to show up, right? You know, spend my gas money. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But that was really the biggest thing for me. And, and to learn a little bit more about dues and even doing payment plans for myself when I first joined, was the biggest thing i was able to pay off i think when i first joined at like 90 dollars in dues um because i also was a coach team when i first joined on the r6 team so you know i was able to do a payment plan i think it was like 25 dollars every like two to three weeks and that's covers the whole semester you do that for the whole semester by the time you get around to it you only have like a small portion left to pay and they're like if it's five dollars you're good to go. We're, we'll cover five dollars for it. You know? But in the past, there, however, I joined in 2020. I didn't have an arena. I was forced to play online, 
and it was a lot tougher. Prehistoric so, era. Yeah, big historic era, aka uh, we paid for it at that time as well. Um, but we won't get into that. So, <laughs> oh, it was a lot of tough stuff we faced early on as a club, and to be here now where we have a lot more opportunities available and all the resources out there, it's truly incredible. So. That is really all I got for you guys, actually. We're heading into spring break here, so a lot of esports action is, uh, funnily enough, coming to a slower halt. Um, you only have um, a week left in your varsity uh, League of Legends I believe we have Rocket four League. more games. Yes. Um, we have a week after spring break, and we technically have the week of spring break, but we're trying to move some of those games. Mm -hmm. yep. Fair enough. So, fingers crossed. We'll have to see what happens here on out. Um, thank you guys for joining me. Is there anything else you'd like to add on? Uh, I didn't get to reply to this initially, but I... I just wanted to say, yeah, you're free anytime to just be be in the studio. We love having you around here. I just wanted I to add that in. Yes, yes, yes. You guys, uh, I'll mention this on air because it doesn't really matter too much. They created a spreadsheet as well, which makes my life easier. I get to go on there and say who's all coming on and my guests. And I get to do it days in advance instead of worrying Adam right here with all the finicky things about when I'm coming <laughs> and who's coming. So shout out to Wider for doing that because I love the organization they've implemented now. We finally have organization. Yes. Finally. It is awesome. <laughs> and um, it makes Adam's job much easier than it looks. So mm -hmm. that's all I got. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Jay. Mm -hmm. And we will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. Farewell. -bye.